So again, when you think about these things in those contexts, again, we have to go back to think about we as humans. When we think about how we are as humans, again, we don't want to just think about the technology. We want to think about everything that goes into our interactions with these products. So again, we want to look at things such as the disciplines in cognitive science. It gives you a different perspective once you bring those things to mind. We've talked about computer science and artificial intelligence. We've also talked about neuroscience, even though we didn't actually call it neuroscience, understanding the brain and how that affects our, how we process information. In psychology, various areas of psychology, cognitive psychology being the most obvious, developmental psychology, in other words, how we develop over time. So people are, for example, are looking very closely at how children learn. Right, how much quickly does a five-year-old learn compared to an adult in general? Much faster. They process information very differently. There are a lot of researchers who are going and looking at development of children, such as how they learn, to try to use that to build better digital products. How do we take advantage of that to help us, those of us who are still young and sprightly, but not children anymore, Learn faster and better and easier. Social psychology. Now, a lot of times students will say, social psychology? Why does that matter? Anyone want to take a guess? And this is uh, for the questions that come out in you know, society. It depends on the product as well, the culture and all that. It depends on the product. It depends on the culture. We are social beings. We interact with the world in a social matter, manner, and that includes technology. And we also have technologies that are very social in nature that kind of seem to almost disappear, such as social media and those sorts of things. Social media is a very, very big influencer when it comes to how we behave, so how we design it. They look very much at social psychology. There's also philosophy. Linguistics, how we understand information, anthropology, education, a lot of different areas. So I want to give you a brief background on cognitive science. I'm going to go through this part fairly quickly. How much time do I have? Okay, I have 10 minutes. I'm going to go through this part fairly quickly. Cognitive science has a central hypothesis. And again, it has to do with thinking. Now, why do I keep mentioning this? What do we do as humans? We think. When we are designing a system, a, a software system, are we thinking about how humans think? Hopefully, we are. We should. Most of the time, does that happen? Yeah, probably not so much. Remember, what are we focused on? If I, if I have to write some code that's going to work correctly, what am I focusing on? The code. But what I want you to do is to take a step back and also think about when you're designing who's going to be using this. It's not just a computer with code. All right, so the central hypothesis. Thinking can best be understood in terms of representational structures in the mind and computational processes that operate on those structures. That was by Thagard. So, does that make perfect sense to everyone? Not yet? Yeah, I didn't think so. It doesn't ever make perfect sense to, it actually doesn't make any sense to most students at this point, but that's okay. Again, what we're doing is we are looking at mental representations and mental processes. That's what we're talking about. The easiest way to really remember this is an analogy that all of you probably are familiar with, which is the analogy between the mind and a computer. Has everyone heard of that, or is there anyone who hasn't heard of this analogy? Pretty much everyone, right? So there is a, uh, a way of looking at how the mind and computers are represented called CRUM, Computational Representational Understanding of the Mind. And the idea behind CRUM is looking at what are the different ways that we can represent the mind. And it uses this analogy between the mind and a computer program. Now, one of the reasons I bring this up is because if you actually look at cognitive science in the field of computing, 
This is one of the oldest philosophies. Still relatively young compared to other, other areas. So here we have the mind. Now what is the mind? The mind is mental representations plus computational procedures. Remember the computational procedures are operate on the mental representations and that gives you thinking. What's the analogy in the computer world? You have data structures and algorithms. Put those together and now you have running programs. See the analogy? Now this of course is a pretty basic analogy when we look at CRUM. CRUM tends to be more specific. Particularly when you look at some of the specifics of how it talks about mental representation. Because there are different kinds of mental representations as we've already mentioned. Now when it comes to CRUM, they actually talk about some specific ones that we're going to go through in a little bit more detail. There are rules, concepts, images, analogies of other things we'll go through. And with Crumb, basically what is done is that you look at each of these and you look for what's called an explanatory pattern. In other words, how do we look at this and how does this really explain how the mind works? So when we look at each of these, and you don't have to memorize this for, for each of them, by the way, it's just kind of give you a, a background. We want to remember that people have mental representations. Right? People have algorithmic processes that operate on those representations. And those processes applied to the representations produce behavior. That's the basic pattern that is looked at when it comes to crumb. And what do they do, do with that is they take it to see how good is this particular concept when it comes to representing what's going on in the mind. How good is it? So there are six approaches to modeling the mind when it comes to Crumb. This, by the way, makes a fabulous, fabulous question on the midterm. I will periodically give you subtle hints like that. I strongly recommend you write them down. So there's logic, rules, concepts, analogies, images, and neural connections. And we're going to be talking about each of those. 